Welcome to the Backroads Bill Podcast. I'm Ben, and today we have on Mitch Azaria, who is an executive producer on an upcoming documentary called Tripping the French River. You may have heard of the Tripping series before. It is a really, really cool series if you're into uh, nature documentaries and things that kind of show these different areas that just appear in our backyard and that you have no idea they're there. It, you get to look at it through a bit of a different uh, lens, so to speak. That is, of course, coming out on TVO this Sunday, April 21st at 8 p.m. And Bill and myself got to give everyone a bit of a sneak peek behind this project. Of course, Earth Day is coming up. It's this upcoming Saturday, April 20th. And I think this is a great way to kind of reflect a little bit on how lucky we are to live where we do in northern Ontario. Of course, if you're listening and you end up living in northern Ontario... And the beauty that is right here on our doorstep, right in your backyard, you can go out and you can see some absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous vistas and areas. And it's also good to think about doing our part and reflect on saying, what can we do to keep our planet clean and going strong for centuries and and millennia to come? We are pleased to be joined by a very special guest, Mitch Azaria, uh, who is the executive producer of the upcoming documentary Tripping the French River, which is coming out Sunday, April 21st. Uh, We're recording this a little bit earlier, but by the time it comes out, it'll be the 17th. So it'll be the weekend um, after this uh, podcast episode comes out. It comes out at 8 p.m. on TVO, TVO Today, YouTube, and I believe some other streaming services. Hank, how are you doing? Hank, I love that. (laughs) <laughs> or sorry. Oh my God. See, you. okay. <laughs> sorry, hey, Mitch. <laughs> I, I love being referred to as Hank. That is- now, okay. Can, can, <laughs> there's a reason why no, he said that's that. That's great. He, he, no, no. I, you know, I get that a lot when when I'm introduced. People say you got to be related to him. Well, know? it's funny because we were talking about this straight before we started. Uh, we started recording. This reminds me of last week when when we were talking about the hundredth anniversary of North Bay, and Bill goes the twenty fifth anniversary. And then I said the 25th anniversary, like a couple, it's just, it's one of those things, but sorry, Mitch, how are you doing? <laughs> I'd be better if I was Hank, but I'm just fine. Thanks for asking. Ben. Wouldn't we all? Um, you said you had a really interesting story about that. Uh, do you want to, do you want to share it? Well, you know, he and he and I obviously share the same last name and he was at Just for Laughs and um, uh, through his people and my people, not that I really have people, but he truly has people. We, we arranged a meeting, so I went to Montreal to meet him. It was at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, and I got there, and his publicist says, oh, you know, I'm so sorry to hear the bad news. And I said, well, you know, what? He, she said, well, you know, your your aunt died. Obviously, Hank's flown back to California. And I thought, oh, she still thinks we're <laughs> we're related. So obviously, um, he, he, you know, he didn't make the meeting, but we found out through correspondence later that as rare as a last name it is, we're not actually related. Well, in my eyes, you are. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if that counts for anything. But uh, Bill, yeah, I'm going to throw over to you because you actually have an article that's going to be coming out um, after this. I believe it's the Saturday. Is it the 20th that it's supposed to be coming out? Yeah, the article on on the French River will be through uh, the extensive network of village media throughout the province. So I'm so excited to have Mitch here because for so many reasons, not only because it's going to be released on Earth Day, but it's paddling season. It's the first Canadian Heritage River. There's so many reasons that it's that fictional boundary between northern and, and, and southern Ontario, and uh, I, I think people are really going to enjoy it. And the trailer, the the uh, the drone shots and things are spectacular. It really captures the beauty. And we're going to talk about all this with Mitch. Yeah, and actually, that trailer, Mitch, looks absolutely phenomenal. Like it's it's almost to, like I've been on the French River, and it's not until you see it in that in that kind of light that you go, wow, like that is such a beautiful, beautiful place. In, in a way that I think being there, it doesn't, I, you also had the coloring and all the other stuff, but it really pops out. Yeah. And I mean, you know, if we're going to hold people for three hours, it better, right? <laughs> so it, <you laughs> yeah, know, we, 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 we spend a long time, um, you know, trying to work out the details because, um, you know, it's, it's a three hour program. It's, it doesn't have commercials. It doesn't have narration. It doesn't have music. So, um, you know, it's, it's driven by its visual and then it's enhanced by, you know, the information boards and, you know, the, the 3d animations. But, um, 
and the shots are long. So, you know, you mentioned the drone shot, you know, to get a drone shot to go for, you know, 10 or 12 minutes, um, and, you know, without a bump and without, uh, you know, without a miscue is challenging. And we've had the same um, drone driver for five years. And I'm not sure there's anybody else in Canada who can, you know, who can hold a shot like that. So tell us a little bit about actually the why why you guys decided to create this documentary where the inspiration came from um yeah just just why uh why this is this got made in the first place the genesis was um and this was pre-pandemic um the genesis was tv ontario had this idea that they want to do something called slow television which was developed in norway norway have you know extremely long winters so they're willing to watch things for hours on end and they wanted, you know, sort of a Canadian version of it. And we looked at it and it was pretty stripped down. It was literally one shot, you know, with one camera and sitting on a train front and, you know, it just kind of run endlessly. And we thought, well, we could do a sort of Canadian version of it. And our first one was the Rideau Canal, which is, you know, just a spectacular spot. And, you know, known to lots of people, like a lot of these places, they're known in name, but no, not known in detail to a lot of Canadians and a lot of Ontarians. And, and, and the Rideau Canal was one of those. And um, our idea was that we would take people as if they were getting in an old mahogany boat and we would put them on, on the canal so they would hear the interactions with the log, the, um, uh, the log keepers. Um, they would be going along and they would look to their left and, you know, what was it? There would be a building there and it would be transformed into, you know, what was an original forest. So we tried to give them a sense of the history of the of the place, but also just kind of keep them in that, in that boat kind of, you know, meandering down this, you know, this wonderful historic site. And that was the first one. And now we're, we're five in. And and how did you get involved personally? Was this something like there's other tripping series um, out there? I believe there's four or five that are already out because this is part of a, a, a series. So there's the Redo Canal, uh, Niagara, the Bruce, Train 185. Were you involved in any of the other ones or, or how did you get involved in this particular project? Yeah, we've been running the, you know, the entire series. So um, all five of them have kind of come out of, you know, my brain as, as the executive producer. I don't do, I don't do, I do a little bit of everything. And one of the things, you know, that, that I'm sort of charged with is, is trying to find, you know, the locations. And, um, and that's challenging because Ontario's got so many great, you know, so many great spots and we're, we're trying to vary it in each year, you know, so one year was a canal. One year we're a red tail hawk flying around Niagara. The next year we're going underwater on shipwrecks on the Bruce Peninsula. You know, the next year we're riding a train. This year we're, you know, we're paddling, um, you know, arguably the most historic and, you know, interesting river in Ontario. So, you know, that's, that's, that's my job is, is to try and, you know, find those places and then, and then making, the, make them engaging. Well, Bill, I'm going to throw to you. This is usually you're the one who talks right away. So this has been a pretty rare occurrence. Mitch, you are seeing history here on the Backroads Bill podcast. <laughs> um, Bill, uh, why don't you give us a little bit uh, of a uh, of um, a look at what the what the French River about the history and everything like that? Because that's your that's your wheelhouse. Yeah. Well, the, first of all, the canoe. I mean, we've had these Canadian sessions where. We, we try to um, determine what is the iconic symbol of Canada. Well, it's a canoe. So, and Roy McGregor, who's uh, not been on the podcast yet, but will be on the podcast, but we've had uh, James Raffin on, and we're going to have Hap Wilson on. And, and so the canoe is really, really important to the uh, Indigenous history of Canada right through and right through to today. And so the French River by choice and, and maybe that's a that's a, a Mitch question for sure you know why why choose the French and so but but I'll just say this that the French River again I often tell people uh, about uh, North America and early pre-colonization because the Muridian uh, trading network was well established before the uh, the, uh, the colonials yeah. arrived but yeah. the yeah. Mississippi yeah. River yeah. was too long yeah. uh, James yeah. Bay and Hudson yeah. Bay were full of ice, and so that's why they came up the Ottawa to the Mattawa, um, across Lake Nipissing, Upper and Lower French, uh, into Georgian Bay, Lake Huron, and Lake Superior. So, and, and the French River was the the most difficult uh, because you you cross the height of land as well. So, there's so many aspects to the French River. But Mitch, why why did you choose the French River? I, I mean, partially, obviously, for you know, for for what you've already you know talked about. 
loved it as um, both a you know an, an, an indigenous river, um, loved it as as a as a as a sort of you know um, European um, story, um, and you know so you've got this layer layer of history, um, you know, imagining the voyageurs, you know, by the hundreds, um, you know, coming down this river, um, uh, but I think also because it's got such multiple personalities, you know, the top is very sort of, it's almost like a bunch of lake puddles. And then, you know, you get to the middle, it gets, you know, slightly more narrow channels. And then the bottom is just, it's just breathtaking with, you know, soaring cliffs and tight little, you know, channels and fast water. And so, you know, for us, it was, it was terrific. You've got this great layer of history on top of what is, you know, a beautiful, um, constantly changing landscape. So it sort of ticked all the boxes for, for what us, for what makes a great tripping episode. Yeah, no, for sure. And, 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 uh, and you described it also well, especially that, that bottom from highway 69 down to, to Georgian Bay and, and all those channels and all that rock and all those white pines, it takes us to the uh, the group of seven. It also, I st- when I stand on that snowmobile bridge right at Highway 69, and I imagine can't imagine the Georgian Bay Ship Canal, which almost came into to existence. And I've talked about that and written about that. And and so the French River has, I think, those multiple personalities. I really really like that. And and so there's that. I think I think viewers are going to. Often people say about living vicariously through the the lands, but I think just seeing the trailer that's what uh, that's what you uh, have accomplished. And I'm looking forward to it. I have had seen nothing else but the trailers. So Ben, I know you're going to tune in on, on that Sunday. But uh, Mitch, tell us also about the uh, some of the challenges you had in 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 making it over the period of time. Yeah, I think that, you know, the greatest challenge was to be able to put, you know, the viewer in, in the bow seat and have them paddle the river while experiencing it and then getting through the fast water, right? The fast water is the challenge that, you know, the flat water, you know, we had a, a camera rig that sort of could withstand that without, you know, without any issue. But what were we going to do through the fast water? So we tried a bunch of rigs and, and what we wanted to do was we wanted to give them give the viewer the experience of going through without that really big bouncy, you know, sort of upsetting. Cause once we, once we get you in the tent, we want to keep you in the tent and, and anything that sort of just is, is sort of uncomfortable for the viewer, you know, they might reach for the remote. So we, 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 we figured out that um, we could get this camera called a 4d it's done by the same people, DJI that do the, you know, the, the best selling drones. And it's got an axis that both works up and down and sideways and is a small enough rig that we could put it onto a canoe. So that's sort of the camera part of it. Then we needed somebody who could get through the white water with um, our cinematographer on the front and that would have the confidence to do so. And Richard Tosh, who you probably um, know, you know, um, Tosh self-propelled, um, he's just the coolest dude ever. You know, when I followed him up and said, you know, do you think you could you know, paddle us through this river and on this, on this, on this rapid and that rapid, he just kind of went, yeah, like there was no detail. There was no, you know, he didn't go on and on. He just said, yeah, 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 I could do that. And there was this confidence in him. And then when he got there, you know, you could just see from the moment he got there, he just carried himself with somebody who could. And, you know, he literally, you know, had our cinematographer's life in the, in his hands, you know, because, you know, our cinematographer is, you know, he's completely focused on the shot and, you know, he can't, you know, he can't sort of participate in the paddle. And luckily we, uh, we stayed dry through all the fast water. And, you know, when you see the program, you see us going through, you know, fairly fast water and it's, it's a pleasant experience. You know, you get to see all the detail. You're not sort of bobbing your head up and down and, and getting lost. Yeah. I, I'm going to say that this is going to be very memorable because I hearken back to, I, I'm, I'm sure Bill Mason would have loved to have the technology at the time because in his National Film Board production called The Voyageurs, much of that was shot in the French River. And he tried to do the things that you just told us about, but technology and having the right people to do that. And, and again, it, that link 
there from what he did, the great videographer that he was at the time, to now this is going to give that, you know, again, sitting in the bow of the canoe and, and going that, Ben, you're going to go in the North Bay to Mattawa canoe race pretty soon, but you've got to watch this because then you're going to know, but of course you'll be, Michaela will be in the stern and you'll be in the bow, but nonetheless, uh, there are rapids on the Mattawa River. But going through whitewater is one of those things that, well, I always say it's better than a roller coaster ride. So I, I, I'm glad you shared some of the, those. It's a little bit more dangerous though, Bill. Yeah, a little bit more dangerous for sure. But I mean, and how many times did you have to do some of those takes? Uh, did you, and, and that's another technical kind of question. And how many hours would you, to try to get it to three hours, how many hours of, of digital tape did you have, uh, so to speak? Wow. Yeah, it's a, it's a great, um, you know, I, I don't, I didn't add them up, but I would guess our ratio <clears throat> for that three hours would be you know, in the, in the 40 or 50 hours to get down to three hours. And, um, yeah, I mean, you know, other than, you know, the scout and then running, you know, running the fast water at times, you're right. You know, we had to do, and this was, you know, tough on, on Richard. Cause then he would, you know, he, he wasn't usually, you know, string it back up. He's usually trying to paddle it back up. And, um, and there were, there were times when it was multiple takes. There was a time when the camera completely, um, you know, sort of, messed up so we had to do like this huge stretch of uh, of water all over I and mean, there, there's always technical things there's a great shot um you're mentioning uh bill mason there's a great shot of him he created almost like the first gopro he had strapped something i think it was either to the front of his canoe or to to his to his helmet that was you know as portable as could be in those days and i remember seeing that photo because he was he was a real tinkler right he was always you know, try to improve outdoor gear and camera gear. And, uh, and, and yet if he would have had this technology, even a GoPro in his hands would have been magical because, um, you know, what he did for the time that he did, it was so far in advance. Yeah, no, as I said earlier, we had James Raffin on it and he wrote the, 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 one of his many books on fire in the bones about Bill Mason and, and told us a lot about how Bill was. And he was very finicky and he had a, a spiritual side to himself as well. And, and anyway, I, I was just curious about, because I'm looking forward to the three hours. I will have no problem staying in the canoe and, and watching that uh, for sure. And, that, and that's a, you know, that is a real... Uh, you have the experience in that, but that's a real trick to try to to try to do that. And from the other the other four productions to date, how have they been received? Uh, and and I don't know if you want to break them down. What people say about th- this, I know what they're going to say about the French River. They're going to talk about the landscape for sure. But I was curious about the other productions because people should should dive in and and take a look at them all. Yeah, I think you know when 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 the Rideau Canal came out, we were we didn't know the pandemic was coming but you know it came and and people's reaction during the pandemic was just sort of it, it was it was so touching because they were thankful that they could get out of their homes without getting out of their homes and then after that we thought you know okay maybe this was a one off because of you know the pandemic and we gave people some you know some small bit of joy but then the next one where we were a hawk um and literally working with a hawk was interesting because, you know, we had a wrangler and a live red tailed hawk and, and she was, you know, she could work for 15 seconds a day and that was sort of it. So that was, you know, that, that, that was really challenging, but all the programs have been really well received. And the kind of feedback we got from the Niagara program was, well, wasn't it really cool to be able to fly like a hawk? And, and we, we worked the drone as if it was a hawk. So we studied the way that a bird moves and we tried to replicate those moves. So none of the moves were mechanical moves. They were the kind of moves that, that a hawk would naturally make. And we worked a lot with the wrangler and we shot tons and tons of scenes with the hawk, um, you know, in the air. And then the train one was really interesting because so many people didn't know the train 185 that runs from Sudbury to White River um, is a, is an old school flag stop train that runs on, you know, one of the, you know, the greatest, um, you know, styles of, 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 of train, um, in the world, these, you know, these wonderful old bud cars, but the fact that you could, you know, come out on the track and stand on the side and wave it down, or conversely, <clears throat> you know, you can load your canoes on the train, tell the engineer where you want to get off, and it could be anywhere on the route, and they would stop the train and unload your canoes. 
that was, you know, that got great feedback because I think most Southern Ontarians had no idea that a train like that still exists in this day and age and that these engineers have this unbelievable relationship with their passengers and that this is an essential route that if, if you don't, you know, if this train doesn't exist, some of these lodges, some of these towns don't exist because it's the only way in, there's no other roads. And for a lot of, you know, Ontarians, that's, that's a very different concept uh, and one that's hard to imagine. So that one was, you know, was received um, really well. We're hoping that, you know, as you had said at the beginning, every Canadian feels like they were born with a paddle in their hands, that they have the ability to paddle. There's just something Canadian about that. And I think that this one, we're hoping, um, you know, gives um, all, 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 all Canadians a sense of, you know, what it's like to paddle um, a, a river. Yeah, we've had had uh, Adam Schultz on the program, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll send him a note. I'm sure he'll be tuning in because he's had some epic adventures. But nonetheless, these are the kinds of people that will give that kind of feedback to because they al- already appreciate that. But And any new landscape, and for some people, again, across around Ontario and beyond the borders of Ontario – We'll look at the French River and say, well, where is that? And and again, that, that whole aspect. Because again, I'm going back to what you said earlier, those multiple layers and personalities, and, and there's a real story there. And often, you know, who's going to speak for the river? Well, you do and we do, and and, and that's, uh, th- that's going to be looking forward. You had a question, I think, Ben. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I found interesting is what you were talking about the difference between Southern and Northern Ontario. And and it just kind of clicked with me where I, I, it really kind of feels like there is a big difference between people who are from, you know, the GTA area and more South versus people who are North of like Ravenhurst, right? There's almost a completely different culture there where, you know, growing up, I had a cottage. I know a lot of people who, who either had cottages or they camped all the time. And then you go down, to the GTA areas. And it's like, you have to be rich basically to own a cottage or you have to, it's not, it's not as common. And I I think that there's this kind of like these kind of documentaries, I think do a really good job of highlighting something that's, that's in our backyard that everybody can go to. But then there's also just understanding if you're not from Northern Ontario, that it's almost a completely different lifestyle. I don't know, Mitch, if you've, if you have any comments on, on that, but um, are you from Southern Ontario or? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm from Montreal, but I spent all my weekends and summers on a farm. So I, I've, I've always had this sort of attachment to the out of doors, but I think you're perfectly right. And I think that's part of the reason also, um, Ben, why we chose the French river is that it's approachable for, you know, for people from, as you said, the GTA, it's not that far. It's it it at times feels like a wilderness, but it's also a you know a river that you can sort of easily get on and off. It's it's a river that can be challenging, but is also you know very approachable. We met um, tons of new um, you know new Canadians, new paddlers um, out there you know for two and three days, and you'd see them you know um, on the portages, and you know they had the most basic equipment, and they were lugging big heavy canoes, but they were out there you know there and. And you could see that there was like this joy and, and this, this sense of, you know, you know, being in, you know, in, in, in the wilderness. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to see. And then, you know, what we try and do, um, and, and I think Bill referred to this is if you, if you make the journey enhanced and interesting, it's one thing if you just go down the river and you're just looking left and right, you're going, this is beautiful. That's sort of fast food. It's digested really quickly. But if in fact you're going down the river and all of a sudden you see a beaver in front of you and you're looking at the beaver and it dives down under the water and you follow the beaver under the water and the next thing you know you're in its lodge and you're looking at its kits and you know you're you're seeing that and you come back out and you're you continue to paddle and they and the information board pops up and tells you that um, you know a kit will stay with its parents for two years. That, you know, beavers on average will cut down 215 trees a year. That, you know, beavers, when they're underwater, have a third eyelid that, you know, acts as a, as, as, as a transparent, um, you know, set of goggles so that they can, you know, sort of see when they're underwater. So we're giving people information as they go along, which, 
you know, enhances what Bill was saying, the experience on the river. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of beautiful pictures. Yeah, no, I haven't written this book yet, but the title is, uh, you know, Close Encounters of the Natural Kind or the Animal Kind, because <laughs> that's exactly it. There's uh, multi dimensions to when you get people outside. I often talk about vitamin N for nature, and, and, and that's, the whole, that's the whole thing. When you look, there's been studies, empirical studies on this, because most times when you, in social media, the, the, the good photos are taken outside in, in natural environments, and people show their happiness, I think, more so in nature than any other domain. Uh, and, and so that's important. Um, uh, I, I think I'm probably one of the few people, if not the only person, has been to all four corners of Ontario, including the geographic center of Ontario and that far northern reach where the polar bears were. And I often ask this question of guests because I'm, I'm big on the emotional intelligence, is that, and we live in this vast and magnificent land of Ontario, that your takeaway, because come Sunday, you're, there'll be some, I don't think, anxiousness, but in any debut, so to speak, you, you anticipate and then you anticipate what people are going to say about it. But what is your takeaway from an emotional point of view, Mitch, on, on this particular produ production compared to the others? I think for me, this one was, um, you know, the sense that um, Canadians are really, really attached to moving water. They're attached to the canoe um, and in, in a way that, you know, we didn't see in, in any of the other locations. Um, the other thing is, you know, as you were saying about, you know, Ontario, that you've been to all, all four corners. You know, what we forget is how vast this province is, right? I mean, the most northern community, you know, Fort Severn, it's as far, you know, from Ottawa or Toronto to Fort Severn as it is from Ottawa or Toronto to Atlanta, Georgia. You know, it's this is a vast, vast province. And for most of us, we're not going to get to the far reaches of it. But a place like the French River, we can get to. And we can experience, you know, what it's like to, you know, sleep under the stars and be in a dark sky and, you know, to have a campfire and to be on, on water that's, you know, that's propelling us along or that at times we're, you know, we're having to fight with. To see, you know, so, you know, soaring cliffs, to go down and see pictographs, you know, that were done by, you know, ancient people, to, you know, to, to, to be in the Voyager channel where you've known you know, that hundreds of voyageurs came through here in these big, massive freight canoes. Like, to be on that kind of water, as you said, for when I get on it, I just I just start smiling. And, and, and you, you see the whole crew smiling, and you know that they're all thinking the same thing. Like, we're on a place that's been, you know, for 3,000 years, people have been on this water, and we're on the exact same water. There's just something joyful about that. Yeah, that was one of my takeaways uh, watching the trailer. That it was, that, and you've said this. It's very doable. You can get on and off that, and very, very many many access points and experience. And the river changes too, from the upper French River at Lake Nipissing right down to Georgia Bay. There is, I kind of like. There's kind of like three thirds there, but nonetheless, it's all that Georgia Bay landscape that you go through. Which, when I describe Ontario, sometimes I say, you know, it's the Canadian Shield, Lake Spear uh, uh, shoreline, the uh, Georgian Bay kind of landscape, and then Southern Ontario, uh, Southern Ontario table lines, tablelands, and the Niagara Escarpment. When you look at it in general terms, so and and so the French River cuts right through this. And uh, again, I think th that's one of the takeaways. But another thing, I think Ben, we should have Mitch just go over the details coming up for Earth Day and and the the launch. Yeah, absolutely, Mitch. Anything. Uh Anything that you want to plug or, or talk about? I know I mentioned it a little bit in the in the introduction, but it's your platform now to shamelessly plug as much as you want. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I hope people um, tune in on TV Ontario, uh, April twenty first, eight p.m. Um, it it streams almost immediately after it airs, so a minute afterwards, um, it's going to stream, and I think it's going to stream in 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 four K. TVO has been converting the hds to 4k and there's something like i i we you know we obviously shoot in 4k and and sometimes i take it for granted but in a program like this that there's so much little detail you know in the sides of the of the river 
um, 4K really, really brings it, uh, you know, brings it to life. So yeah, I just hope people watch. I mean, and and I, I say that obviously because you know, the, the, you know, I, I, I'm the producer, but I also say that because I think it's it's you know it's 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 a part of Ontario that you know many many of us don't you know have the privilege of getting to. And because Earth Day, of course, is the day before it's Saturday, um, I wanted to give I wanted to kind of open up for both of you guys, uh, but we'll start with Mitch. Just kind of why you decided to release this right after Earth Day, if that was a coincidence or if there's something there and, and kind of what what does Earth Day mean to you? Well, I mean, I think it's it's a moment to pause, right? And think and, you know, and and maybe, you know, decide. I, I remember, you know, my, my, my daughter Hannah talked a lot about this, you know, what can you do, right? And and her answer was just a small increment, right? All of us does, you know, all of us can make one small little increment. That's, you know, that's the best thing we can do for the planet rather than, I mean, of course, big gestures of, you know, will we'll go a long way, but it's just a time for us to pause and think about, you know, what it is that's, you know, sort of important to us and what it is to be as members of this planet. Yeah, on Monday, I'll be on the CBC Morning North and I'll be mentioning uh, the, the Earth Day book talk and in, 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 in this particular production. And, and this year in Earth Day, there's a plastics theme. And, and so it, 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 is, it gives us pause to talk about uh, what we need to do with our, our own plastic consumption because we know that the, the biggest problem next to overpopulation is our consumptive behavior. And so these are the things that give us pause. Everything we do, especially when we go outside, that uh, we, we should stay away from the plastics as best we can and or reuse things that we can use multiple times. And I think it's, again, it's it's about our, our, our own kind of pattern of behaviors that how we treat the environment and reducing our our consumptive behavior and our impact on the environment. And I think, you, you know, when you think about the French River and you, it's been there for a long, long time and in many, many places, as I say, for many rivers, it hasn't changed since the, the first uh, of a humankind in, impact on the river. Okay, as we, as we wrap things up, um, any last words, Mitch, that you want to, anything we didn't cover, any last words that you want to you tell the audience before uh, we let you go? I, no, I, I don't think so. I mean, I think that, you know what? What they'll what they'll be surprised with is that um, it's 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 a it's a it's a I think quite a beautiful journey, but it's a journey that's enhanced by you know over 120 information boards that you know that just give you um, a real sense of place, history, uh, natural and you know human history. So it's also uh, as TVO will always tell us, um, it's 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 educational without being you know, school books, school bookish. Absolutely. Bill, anything you want to say? I'm looking forward to uh, the release of this and the next one, Mitch. <laughs> Absolutely. Mitch Azaria, thank you so much for joining us. He's the executive producer of the upcoming documentary, uh, documentary Tripping the French River, which is coming out Sunday, April 21st. So when this broadcast drops, it'll be this coming Sunday at 8 p.m. on TVO, TVO Today, YouTube, and right after that on all of, uh, and any particular streaming services, Mitch? Uh, yet it's on TVO's, uh, uh, YouTube channel. I, I, I don't, I wish I knew more details. Sorry, Ben. So yeah, so no, no streaming services that you know of outside of TVO. <laughs> no, but, but thank you both for, for having me. This was wonderful. Yeah, no, it was good. And the timeliness of this, as I say, and, and, uh, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I've said it a number of times, looking forward to this because it's, uh, Again, you can, uh, when I watch things and you want, uh, for me, it's immediately whatever, wherever it is, you want to watch something, then you want to go do it in part or in whole or just say, yeah, that's why we go outside. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mitch. You're very welcome. What a pleasure to have Mitch on the show, and I'm super excited to check out the documentary. There are links in the description for this trailer to the show. And of course, don't miss it on TVO. You can watch Tripping the French River at 8 p.m. Eastern on April 21st on TVO Today's website, YouTube channel, Smart TV apps, and of course, their broadcast channel. There will be links to their YouTube channel and website in the description below as well. And a big thanks to TVO for supplying us a lot of the visuals that we used for the video version of this podcast. I can honestly say it was a very professional, easy process throughout the whole thing. The emailing back and forth, getting Mitch on, 
A huge thank you to everybody that was involved. Jill Spitz, who was their publicist, did an amazing job uh, conforming back and forth to get this set up. So big thank you to her. And of course, to Mitch as well for taking the time out of his day to, to come on. So if you enjoyed this episode, you can find the Backroads Bill podcast on all of your favorite podcast players. And of course, on the North Bay Echo YouTube channel. And consider giving us a follow as well to make sure you stay up to date with new episodes. They drop every single Wednesday morning. And of course, you can also find this podcast on northbayecho.ca. And if you are on northbayecho.ca, you can check out all of the other kind of Northern Ontario slash North Bay Area-esque podcasts that we have available. We have quite a few that are there from business to sports to uh, entertainment and uh, of course, political and, and more local things in the North Bay area. We have shows such as To North Bay With Love, where yesterday uh, me and Lisa actually talked about a recent road rage incident that Lisa was involved in that actually involved a student driver, which is actually kind of a, a funny thing. I also talked a little bit about my biggest pet peeve in drive throughs And of course, we also talked to a couple of uh, gentlemen who are part of the cricket team here in North Bay, and they talked about cricket as a whole, but also the potential cricket field that be, could be coming to the city. And tomorrow on the Echo Essentials podcast, we have Brian Callahan on, who is a descendant of the Dion Quits. Of course, their 90th birthday is coming up next month. But it's a very interesting way because the Quint story in, a, in of itself is a very polarizing viewpoint, depending on what lens you view it through. Uh, that episode drops tomorrow afternoon. So thank you so much for joining us. And of course, we will see you next week for another Backroads Bill adventure.